Hello and thanks for watching the Friends of the Farms lecture series. Each session is designed to deliver a small and in-depth dose of cannabis education. My name is Candace. I want to thank you for joining us and all of our viewers and customers from the pharmacy, the pottery, and the natural healing center, as well as all of our friends joining us from around the world. Every week and every episode, we host a new guest joining us to talk about a different cannabis topic. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you get notified whenever we post new content. Today, we're welcoming back two of our favorite guests, Carrie Mape, Mapes and Patty Pappas from Hello Again. These two lovely ladies are longtime friends, regular guests, and creators of the first of its kind cannabis vaginal suppository designed to help women with many of our health issues. They've been regular guests in our, on, in our past episodes on cannabis women's health, motherhood and cannabis, and endometriosis and cannabis. So make sure to check those out on our YouTube channel. If you're joining us in live, then it's October and it's also Menopause Awareness Month. And we're honored to have them on to talk about this really important topic. Hello Again was created when Patty and Carrie began to enter this very important stage of their life. And together they researched cannabis as an alternative when they couldn't find something um, that was working for them and when they went to dispensaries and weren't really finding like the perfect product for what they were looking for. We'll get to their story in just a minute and what led to the creation of this revolutionary product as well as more about menopause and how cannabis can play a role in their journey. Thanks so much for being with us ladies. Thank, Thank you Candace. <clears throat> I love having you guys on. You're so nice. I think you were actually our first menopause webinar maybe four years ago when we first launched our product so thank you we've we've you've been such a good friend to hello again yeah i think you guys were one of my first guests too when we first started the webinar series it was our cannabis and women's health issue and so menopause was one of like several women's health issues that we talked about so i'm glad that we can come back and we can just talk about menopause specifically because i have had several women talk and talk to me and ask me about this this topic and I said you can watch that web that one webinar but I wanted to get more into this topic specifically and I thought since you know uh, October is menopause awareness and you guys are like the queens of cannabis and menopause I was so honored to have you guys on so thank you so much um, our good friends for being on today it's our pleasure thank you, thank yeah. you. So why don't we start at the beginning? Can you guys tell me like how this um, journey kind of started? What led you guys to cannabis and, and um, you know, making a suppository to help women, um, you know, on this journey? Well, I suspect that your listeners and everyone watching is here because you either identify with being in menopause or maybe you suspect um, you might be feeling the way that you're feeling because of menopause and certainly Patty and I can definitely relate to the way that feels when you just want to feel like yourself again. And I wish that I'd been, both of us had been a little bit more savvy about cannabis at the time because we would have actually looked to cannabis for relief, but we didn't have that kind of knowledge. We just wandered into a dispensary out of curiosity because they were popping up all over LA after cannabis became adult legal in California, and it was kind of a field trip for the two of us. It was a pharmacy uh, dispensary. It was the Pottery in, in uh, on Venice Boulevard in LA, and um, we were just really blown away by what we saw in there and what we learned, and um, by how much the bud tender knew, the staff members knew, and how patient they were with all of our questions because we truly didn't know what we were looking at what it did and how it worked in the body. So that was kind of the beginning of it. Well, and I think the other the other part of it was when we were standing in that dispensary, we both started to talk to each other, even though we'd known each other for 20 years, about some of the symptoms that we were having. I couldn't sleep through the night. You know, Carrie had some memory issues. We were talking, all these different things were coming up that the bud tenders were telling us <clears throat> that there were products there that could help address. 
So it was really the first dialogue we'd had with each other about, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going through menopause, you're going through menopause, these are some of the same common symptoms. So it was an awakening to cannabis, but it was also sort of a uh, the beginning of the discussion about menopause and what we were going through and opening ourselves up to other women as well to talk about it. And it was it was like a, the floodgates just opened. It was fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it really, I mean, we really, from that, I mean, I'm I, not even sure we were in our car yet when we were <laughs> having the conversation that, that Patty just referenced and deciding that we really wanted to try menopause for the physical relief, the cognitive relief and the emotional relief of all of these symptoms that we were having. Um, and after that, you know, there was just kind of an odyssey of research and meeting with as many people as would meet with us that were either in the cannabis space or in the women's wellness space and learning and finding the right partners to help us with, um, you know, the medical formulation and then the actual formulation, the cannabis formulation, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. I see in the chats, um, somebody was saying they've been going through menopause since 37 and they're now 44. And I, I, I can relate to that so much because I, in my early 40s, late 30s, I was having hot flashes. <clears throat> I couldn't sleep through the night. I was having mood swings. I kept asking my doctor, I think I'm in menopause. I think I'm in menopause. And they would take my blood and they'd come back and they'd say, no, not yet, not yet. And I couldn't believe it because I thought if this isn't menopause, I'm in for real trouble like when menopause comes. So I think this this is my favorite slide that Carrie made. Hopefully you can all see it because it sort of starts to explain the differences between, uh, you know, before menopause and then perimenopause and then after menopause because it's the fluctuation in your hormones that are going crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and your menopause officially with a doctor starts one year after your last period. So that's technically what menopause means. So if you're not having your period for that whole year, after that year, you can see by the bottom box, it's pretty flat. You're not having those fluctuation in the hormones that are causing you all those symptoms and you know uncomfortable symptoms that, are, that you're going through. It's actually happening perimenopause. So I just wanted to take a minute and go through some of those hormones that you can see. So when, when your body, when you're in your childbearing years and you, you, know, you know you have your regular cycle, and this output of hormones is going up and down on a secular level. And you kind of, you know, you can time it every 28 days or it's a little bit different for everybody. But you kind of know when those boosts in hormones are going to come and what's that going to do to your body. Are you going to get a little crabby? You know, you're going to get swollen. You're going to get cramps. You're going to have the, all those physical, emotional, cognitive issues that surround that short window just before your body is getting ready to sort of present itself for pregnancy. And then if it doesn't happen, you have your period and kind of move on from there. But during perimenopause, as you get older, you can see it's my favorite middle slide there, the wackiness of the hormones. You can't predict anything. It can happen at two in the afternoon. It can happen at two in the morning. All the symptoms that you have sort of tightly tightly put into your regular monthly cycle are now just erratic and they're happening all the time and they can happen for up to 10 years. I know they did for me. So if you, you know, if you are having those symptoms, you are going, you are in perimenopause and you should really reach out and try to help yourself because sometimes technically, you know, you could be redirected because you're not in menopause yet. That was the most frustrating thing for me. Yeah. Yeah, let me move these along a little bit. Um, you know, if you're feeling like you're in menopause, you're not alone. There are 55 million American women in menopause and 5,000 or so a day kind of enter menopause. So this, this is a public health concern and um, this is affecting a large part of our society. And as Patty said, you know, the symptoms can last up to 10 years. This whole kind of crazy, you know, time period where you're getting all of these symptoms, which we'll talk about in a minute, and yet you still are getting your period in one way or another, that time period can last for up to 10 years. And, um, you know, women are very used to being caretakers. We take care of a lot of people, but we're always kind of seem to be last on the list. Um, so we're hoping today that, you know, maybe we'll help everybody realize that, you know, 10 years of of feeling not your best and you need to feel like yourself again is too long. Yeah. 
Um, and you're and just so sleeping with towels wrapped around you at night. Right. And yeah, <laughs> right. Anxiety, you know, worrying, you know, there are all kinds of things. So, you know, and some of those symptoms never go away. Some things like vaginal dryness and a couple others. So maybe we'll move on and kind of talk about some of the more common symptoms about um, of how you feel during menopause. Do you want to do that, Patty, or do you want me to? Sure. So, I mean, hot flashes, I had hot flashes. I had them fast, furious, and they were fierce. I mean, it was always, of course, right when I'm standing and talking to somebody that I really cared about or, you know, was wanted to present myself very well, and then all of a sudden just the sweat starts pouring down. And it causes so much anxiety. You know, all these symptoms cause anxiety. And you don't necessarily always relate that anxiety to those symptoms. You just think you have anxiety. So hot flashes was a killer for me. I know um, night sweats, I used to sleep with a towel below me. So then halfway through the night, I could take the towel out from under me. Um, I didn't sleep through the night for 10 years. Uh, a lot of aches and pains, low energy, the irritability. It got me everything. I mean, I, you might want to talk about brain fog. Yeah, that for, so for me, I had those things, but what stopped me in my tracks was brain fog. I really was quite concerned about myself. I kept it to myself for a long time. I worried about it for a long time. Um, like some of these other symptoms, um, the symptom itself can exacerbate your anxiety and your worrying because now you're worrying about the symptom that you have. And um, I actually drove myself to a memory clinic. I didn't tell my family. I had my memory checked. I did it twice because I was convinced it was getting worse. And um, on that second visit, the doctor said, this is, this is a part of menopause. This is hormonal related. And you need to talk to your doctor about that, which I did. Um, but I had no idea if I had known kind of the checklist of symptoms that could happen, I would have identified this as part of perimenopause, menopause, and um, wouldn't have put myself through the worry and the secrecy and the, all of that. So, you know, and brain fog, you know, that can be problems with memory, just coming to the end of a sentence and forgetting the word, the key word that you've mastered, you know, crafted your sentence around. It can be a lack of concentration um, and it can be a lack of focus. So, you know, that's, brain fog is something that I think we're all feeling a little bit um, for a variety of reasons, but I, I urge you not to explain it away as being a part of a busy life and a busy parent and a busy partner and a busy um, in your career because sometimes it's biological. Right. It's that drop in, especially estrogen is probably the most important one of those hormones back in that slide. I mean, that can affect even your hair texture. I know my hair texture changed about that time. It can affect your bone mass. It can affect your mucous membranes, which leads can lead to vaginal dryness when, it, when estrogen starts to deplete in your body, your blood vessels, your urinary tract, your pelvic floor. I mean, it connects to so many things that are part of our everyday feeling good processes that when it starts to drop along with the progesterone and the luteinizing hormone and all, and the follicle stimulating hormone, all those hormones that are getting ready, you all plump and ready to have a baby, you know, start to drop and then they stay sort of down. It really starts to take a toll on your physical body. You know, um, 51% of women in menopause experience this kind, this level of anxiety for the first time in their lives during yeah. menopause. So it really, you know, Sometimes it's easy to explain away that you're feeling the way you're feeling because of circumstances in your life, but um, but this is a part of menopause. And then it's like a ten year hangover is what my my son my twenty my son who's in his twenties said when I sat down and explained to him what menopause felt like. Oh my god! <laughs> but there's some other symptoms. Those are very common ones. There are, there are a long list of things that can be happening, all really related to the drop in estrogen or the sporadic estrogen in your body. Sore breasts is one that could be a, a burning or a tenderness, and that's related to the surge in your hormones, much like the surge in your hormones, you know, when you're pregnant mm -hmm. is causing all of those things as well. And, you know, the treatment for that, sometimes extra vitamin E and extra vitamin B can help with that. Definitely, you might want to get a new bra or something that feels a little bit better, but also just pain management. And, you know, as we go through these, I'll just call out, you know, can't where cannabis can help. And certainly we all know that um, pain management for sure is one place where cannabis can really help. Itchiness, which can be in your extremities, it can be in your genitals, it can be all, anywhere in your body, really. Estrogen supports collagen production. 
and it also supports the production of natural oils. So when your estrogen levels go down, you know, you need more moisture in your skin. So you might want to think about leveling up your skincare a little bit. Um, tingly extremities, which can be a crawling feeling. It can be a pin and needle kind of feeling or a numbness. Um, and again, those fluctuations in estrogen impact the central nervous system and um, a healthy diet can help with this, salt baths, and I would really recommend a cannabis um, bath bomb. Those are wonderful. Um, and maybe even a little extra magnesium can help with the tingly extremities. 56% um, of women in menopause report muscle tension. Sorry, that's my phone that I thought I turned off. 56% um, of women um, report muscle tension during menopause, and that could be described as tenderness or tightness or kind of a strained feeling in your muscles. And this is because estrogen balances the cortisol in your body, and the cortisol is that stress hormone. So more cortisol or erratic cortisol can, can uh, lead to muscle tension. So an increase in sleep can really help with this. And of course, we all know that cannabis helps with sleep. Uh, working on your posture a little bit is probably a good idea. And then um, CBD is a real muscle reliever and uh, muscle uh, relaxer. And um, CBD is a part of the cannabis plant. It's one of the many cannabinoids in cannabis. It's um, non psychoactive and is really great for um, a relaxation and for uh, definitely um, helping muscles to relax. Um, women can see an up tick in allergies, whether they are worsening or you're getting new allergies, and that too is histamines are related to estrogen. Um, headaches and migraines, steady estrogen level is what's necessary for a healthy um, uh, neurologic function. And just like when some women get their periods and the estrogen goes up and down, um, headaches and migraines sometimes accompany periods. It's a similar situation for menopause. And again, cannabis is a great pain reliever. And um, THC in particular is another cannabinoid in the cannabis plant, and it's a vasodilator. So THC um, can bring more blood to the area, can relax the blood vessels, um, much like exercise does. And then brittle nails and thinning hair. You know, uh, Patty mentioned thinning hair. Brittle nails is kind of the same the same explanation as itchiness. Thinning hair happens to half of all men menopausal women and 80% of postmenopausal women. And it affects how you feel about yourself and your self-confidence. It has to do with lower estrogen and higher male hormones, also getting hair where you don't want it. And, you know, good collagen supplements, proper nutrition, and um, there are medications out there that can help with thinning hair as well. Mm. So, a lot of changes going on in your body. So. A lot of changes going on in your body. Um, you want to take it from here, Patty? Yeah. So I think up until just recently, really, women were provided very few options. And unfortunately, mainstream medicine went straight to um, typically uh, uh, um, medicine, you know, pharmaceuticals. And that has a whole host of other side effects that could cause a lot of long-term issues like Ambien for sleep. For women, especially the way they do the dosing can cause long-term sleep issues when you're taking something to help with sleep. I think the gabapentin they give for uh, hot flashes and you know all these are pretty serious antidepressants um hrt is a great uh okay we'll get to that we'll keep that one separate but unfortunately those pharmaceuticals that they use to kind of put a band-aid on certain specific symptoms end up causing more um issues than you wanted to start and they didn't really have a lot of choices and i think if that wasn't your choice often women would then self-medicate and what was around then was wine you know, a martini, chocolate, caffeine, a lot of caffeine, Coca-Cola, all the things you see there, sugar, all those things it would do to boost your energy when you needed it, calm you down when you want to calm down. All those things, again, have pretty significant, can have pretty significant negative effects on your body and your um, sense of well-being. So 
um, cannabis is, you know, what we discovered that day in that dispensary was what an option, you know, push those two aside, the self-medication and the pharmaceuticals. And here's this all natural plant that's available that we could use for our wellness. And it, that was really our aha moment that day. It was incredible. But we should go back to the HRT. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. The hormone replacement and Carrie and I both have, you know, every woman should do what they need to do. Some women can't do it because of history of cancer. Or they've had cancer. I do a combination of cannabis with hormone replacement and Carrie can speak for her story. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I did I, for quite some time. When we started with Hello Again, I went off my hormone replacement to see what would happen. And I was able to control all of my my negative symptoms with Hello again, which was great. Um, I recently went back on it for a different reason unrelated to all of this. But what we're finding with women who are using hormone replacement and hello again is that there's a feeling that you can stay on the lowest level possible with the hormone replacement therapy. So when you start it and you're still getting hot flashes, there's some spillover symptoms, instead of going back to the doctor and saying and going on a higher dose. Mm -hmm. uh, you can manage those with cannabis in general and then hello again in specific. Nice. So I'm going to look up, I'm going to be looking up here because you guys can't see it, but these slides are so teeny tiny on the screen <laughs> that we're looking at. And this one's pretty, pretty packed. So I'm going to have to look up, um, look up to my right here. But basically, you know, we've been talking about the use of cannabis for menopause symptoms and really what got Patty and I that day was learning that the body has a complete system that's put in place in order to keep us balanced and well. And that means when something goes wrong in your body emotionally or physically or cognitively, there's a call out and your body makes cannabinoids. They're called endocannabinoids because your body makes them. They're released into your system. And all over your body, you'll see up in the upper right-hand corner, there's that little diet, that little drawing. Um, all over your body, you have receptors for these cannabinoids. They're in your skin, they're on your elbow, they're in your organs. Uh, the most dense place is in your brain, but the second most dense place is in the female reproductive tract. But these are, they're all over the place. And when those cannabinoids that have been released on demand meet the receptors, the biological result of that is to gain homeostasis for your mood, for your energy, for your cognition, um, for your temperature control system. So uh, cannabis just to, to us, to Patty and me, seems so uniquely suited to right the ship of <laughs> menopause. It was a stormy seas that we were in to right the ship. And the important thing to know is that the cannabinoids from the cannabis plant so closely resemble the cannabinoids that your body makes that they can fit in those receptors as well. So there's a lot of talk about, you know, disease and um, conditions. And is it because maybe some of us aren't making enough cannabinoids and we need and supplementing with cannabis can help? Um, unclear, but um, for whatever reason, if you are in, if your body is not in balance, Cannabis can be a great way to access this system that's in your body. It's in the body of all primates. It's in the body of, um, it's been, you know, found to be, to predate uh, the respiratory system. I mean, this is a major part of keeping you alive and uh, using cannabis to um, supplement your body that way can really be, can work wonders. So well, historically they knew to use it. I mean, until the last yeah. hundred years when, we put the kibosh on it. It was used by humans since for thousands of years to make themselves feel better. They, you know, they obviously didn't know why, but they found it and it worked. So <clears throat> hopefully we'll start learning more and more exactly how it works. So beyond just being able to, not just, but beyond being able to access the endocannabinoid system within your body, THC and CBD, they have some terrific qualities on their own, pain relief very anti-inflammatory, muscle relaxation, and vasodilation, which is bringing blood to a specific area. So that is really what led us to making life difficult on ourselves because now we're gonna sell the fact that you might be feeling the way that you're feeling because you're in menopause. 
<laughs> and gosh, you might want to try cannabis. But thirdly, the suppository is the perfect delivery system. And it, believe me, it would be a lot sexier and easier on Patty and me if this was a mint or a chocolate or any other delivery system. But, you know, putting the cannabis in the vaginal tract where you have all of these receptors, number one, is extremely powerful. Number two, you're bypassing the digestive tract and you're bypassing the liver. So in the liver is where THC becomes psychoactive basically. And so by bypassing that, we can use THC in our suppositories without the psychoactivity. And when THC is working together with CBD and other plant materials, it's the best analogy is, you know, each of the Rolling Stones is a great musician, but the magic <laughs> happens when they're all together. And um, that's certainly the case with CBD and um, all the cannabinoids. When you add the THC, you allow the THC to be there. So this product is a suppository because we wanted to avoid psychoactivity. There were plenty of products out there for end of day relief, but we wanted to use something to relieve our symptoms and kind of push those aside and feel like ourselves again and get on with the day. Uh, it's a suppository because we can, we really wanted to create a product that was consistent and um, consistent from use to use and consistent between people. So a lot of cannabis products, it might hit Patty differently. If we smoke, it might hit Patty differently than it hits me. If we take an edible, I might have a different experience every time I take the same edible. That wasn't gonna be useful um, for what we were envisioning for Hello Again. So with the suppository, the only thing that really impacts um, experience is body temperature, which really doesn't change that much from person to person. So the, the suppository was really a, you know, a beautiful solution to what we were trying to solve. What did I miss, Patty? Well, I just the, it's it's the soothing base. We have avocado oil, vitamin E, and cocoa butter, along with all the other ingredients. And um, yeah. for vaginal dryness, which is a huge issue for women once they're in menopause, but it does tend to long last pretty much through forever, and that can affect your sex life it can affect we've had a woman tell us one time she could never wear jeans because she was so dry it was so painful so it really you know bleeds out into a whole bunch of other again um problems that occur in your life that you know are three steps down that are that are causing you pain anxiety um embarrassment whatever whatever the issue is so um yeah we love that you're putting it there that has been a space used by many for, for a long time. Things have gone in and out of there for various yep. reasons. <laughs> and now, you know, we love to use our suppositories to feel good, to be a source of our wellness. So we love it. I mean, just that poetry of that has been great for us. So for those of you who've never used a suppository before, please, or if you have maybe to treat a yeast infection or something like that, please, that is not this, this that is not this suppository. This is part <laughs> of it. We really worked hard on our, on our product development. Um, for this suppository, first of all, to melt at the right rate. So it melts, you put you, you you open up the shell and you put it in your vagina and it melts within about 30 minutes. Sometimes it's nice to just like get back in bed and look at your emails and drink your coffee. Sometimes if you have to get going, you might use a tampon, but um, it melts in about 30 minutes. And like it, you know, suppositories are used as a delivery method for other medications as well. And like with those medications, the effects of a cannabis suppository can be expected to last six to eight hours. My experience is that when I use it, it seems to kind of get me back in balance, right the ship a little bit, and I can ride that out for a couple of days. And then I feel a little wonky again and I use it, use another hello again. But some women use them day, night, day, night, day, night, day, night. So it just depends on the body. That's, That's me. Yeah. I like to use it day, night, day, night. I love that every day, um, you know, we, I, people will, will say, now, if you want to have a psychoactive high, you can certainly combine it with things. We're not saying that that's not something that you can't do, but, mm -hmm. you know, at, at this age, we're busy. We want to get out. We want to drive. We want to go have meetings. We want to do all that kind of stuff. We just didn't want that psychoactivity. So, um, 
yeah, I, I use it night and day. The sleep one for me is magic. I just to, to, to not wake up at two in the morning or to wake up, go to the bathroom and not just be bombarded with all the thoughts of things I have to do the next day, but just to wake up in the next time at 630 in the morning or, you know, the next morning. And I'm it's just it's it's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> it's really we all know cannabis kind of puts you in your body and takes you out of your head a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. certainly useful at 2 a.m. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Okay. Well, so we have we have a suite of cannabis depositories, but we wanted to focus first on the, the original, which was the, the product that we made specifically for menopause. It's called Hello Again Every Day. And you can see there that we're really targeting um, brain fog and mood and energy and body temperature. And again, vaginal moisturization. And what I think I'm really proud of what we're really proud about about our product is that you know we we each of our products have a, has a different ratio of CBD and THC, differing amounts and a different ratio. They all have the same nourishing base, as Patty said, with cocoa butter and vitamin E and avocado oil. But they each product has a different suite of extra botanicals that were chosen really to bring in kind of the characteristics of each of those plants, the terpenes of each of those plants, so that we could really um, direct and focus and, and target the symptoms that we're trying to target. So, you know, when you look at a box of Hologan, you're going to recognize every single ingredient. They're all listed here. Rosemary, um, rose geranium, hops, Helichrysum, Shisandra, all of these botanicals were chosen because they have terpenes and other phyto, phyto compounds that help with uh, mental focus and, um, and, and, and lifting energy and um, you know helping with body temperature. Hops helps with uh, regulating body temperature. So we really um, thought long and hard about this list of botanicals and our um, move this slide. Our other product is Hello Again Sleep. And you'll see there a different set of botanicals. No surprise that chamomile and lavender are in there for good reason. Um, and those botanicals are important. When, when, we were, when we were formulating Hello Again, we got our formulation down first without the cannabis. We just worked with the botanicals because there's no reason for those to be in there if they didn't have positive, positive effect. Um, and we got them, and they really did. And then, of course, layering in the THC and the CBD was a real um, amplifier for sure. So after we were on the market for a couple of years, <clears throat> we were getting some really exciting feedback from younger women in the dispensaries, from our, on, through our website, through our personal experience. I have three daughters. Carrie has a daughter, all their early 20s that they were also using our Hello Again menopause product for their period pain, which makes a lot of sense. You're putting it right where things are happening and also yeah. helps with anxiety and inflammation. And then also hangover from all ages of women who were saying, wow, I, I slept a lot better than I should have when I you know, had an extra glass of wine last night. I felt a lot better. I woke up the next morning and I used Hello Again and it kind of got me back going on my day. So period and hangover were really born out of usage um, from customers and website, you know, people who wrote into us on the website and our own personal experiences. And that was really, really, we launched those last year. And I think that was as exciting as the first two, because it just broadened our reach to really women of all ages. Yeah, the endometriosis community really uh, found us early found our menopause product early and um, has really found a lot of relief with the hello again period. And I mean, a lot of women suffer from endometriosis and it often takes yeah. 10 years to get a proper diagnosis. So there are a lot of women in pain out there and it really makes us happy that we're helping that. So, and there's our website and our Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. We love, we love <laughs> getting more followers. <laughs> and just as a reminder, again, at the, all the pottery store, the pottery and, and uh, pharmacy stores, we're 30% off um, for, uh, for all Hello Again products. Yeah, and they're wonderful products. And I love it because there's not very, very many cannabis suppositories out there, vaginal suppositories either. I think you guys may be the only, I think you guys are the only ones on the market, right? 
I think for sure in California, I mean, there have been little ones like local companies that pop up here or there, but I think as a statewide company, for sure in California, and I have, I, as far as I know in other states as well, um, and I, I honestly believe it's because we are customer founders. We create, we, okay. we created this product for ourselves to make ourselves feel better. We didn't <laughs> go out at all to become cannabis entrepreneurs. Trust me, there's nothing harder <laughs> in, the, in the world to do. <laughs> but um, you know, once we went down that road and we found something that was really helpful, it, that you know, we just we did it, and um, that's yeah. I, th I think that's what keeps us going every day. It's just getting all that feedback that it's actually making people feel better. Well, and I'm I can I'm pretty confident saying that we're the only ones that are so targeted. You know, this right. this product is for menopause relief. This is for period relief. This is for sleep. This is for, this. So, and that really has a lot to do with those um, added botanicals. Yeah, it's a wonderful product, and I, I love what you guys are doing. Can Can you tell me how you guys came up with the name Hello again? Well, Carrie's husband had a lot to do with it, but we, you know, we felt that if your symptoms of lack of sleep, of anxiety, of inflammation and pain, of all the if hot flashes, all the things that sort of make you one thing women say all the time when they're in menopause is I just don't feel like myself. Yeah. I just don't feel like myself. And you, I, I mean, I think I used to just say it out into to the air, like as I was walking around, you don't feel like yourself. And so if you could peel back those symptoms, if you can get a good night's sleep, if you don't have, you know, if your arthritis isn't hurting, if you're not anxiety, you know, you don't have anxiety and people aren't bothering you as much as that, you know, you're not getting, people aren't getting on your nerves and all that gets peeled back. You saying hello again to yourself. Yeah. When we want you to welcome yourself back. Yes. Yeah. But technically there was a night with martinis and our yes. husband where a lot of ideas were going around and yeah, John, John hit the nail on the head. Yeah. <laughs> Hello again. I love it. You know, a lot of so many people, too, they don't want to, you know, especially, you know, as we get older, you know, as you know, we don't a lot of people say, I don't want to get high. I just want to feel normal. I want to feel like myself again. You know, I want to not have to feel like this or feel like that. You know, and I feel like that's what your guys' product delivers. You know, it's not about, you know, getting intoxicated. It's just about feeling normal, about feeling balanced, about not dealing with, you know, whatever is plaguing you and not making you feel um, quite like yourself again. So that's, I love what you guys really deliver. So, um, that's really cool. <clears throat> um, so I, I know that we had one question from the audience. I wanted to ask you guys. Um, so there's somebody that, um, lives on the East coast. So if there's somebody, you know, that lives, um, you know, on the other state, is there any plans that you guys have, you know, to make this like with hemp extracts or what would you say for like somebody that lives in a state that doesn't have hello again, what do you have any like resources or any, you know, what would you say for somebody that lives in a state that doesn't have hello again? I mean, I, I if okay. cannabis is legal, I would go explore some other products, probably some edibles, some bath bombs, some teas. I mean, there's a lot of different products that can be very helpful for some of those specific symptoms. I think what's so great about a suppository is it actually addresses quite a few of the symptoms with one product. But, um, you know, we've explored going into other states or having a CBD. If, 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 if we could formulate a product that was as effective, we would, we would explore it more. But, so, you know, so far it's the magic of THC with CBD and um, we're sticking to that. Yeah. Maybe one day, you know. One day. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it'll become legal. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> tinctures, and topical, tinctures and well, topicals certainly you can yeah. use for psychoactivity. Tinctures you can really, you know, learn about your body. And I think one of the kind of beautiful things about cannabis is it's kind of bespoke medicine. Mm -hmm. And you really have to kind of use it, trial trial and error, figure out what the right dose is for you, how it's gonna make you feel here and there, and um and tailor your your medication plan your cannabis plan for yourself. And that'd be really wonderful if that extrapolated over to, you know, mainstream pharmaceutical medications as well. Yeah. Um, there's another question. Somebody's asking, um, when you guys were doing your product formulation, did you find that the botanicals affected the pH at all? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's a great question. You need to be very careful. You know, the, the vaginal kind of microbiome, first of all, the pH balance in your, in the vagina is slightly acidic, just a little bit. 
we certainly didn't want to um, disturb that. So we had that in mind with our formulation for sure. And then the, you also have to keep in, in um, mind the microbiome of the vagina. And we were actually, we were involved in a study. We didn't know it, but there was an independent study that was looking at a lot of pharmaceuticals um, that are out there for treating yeast infections, all vaginal pharmaceuticals for treating yeast infections and other things um, over the counter, as well as um, some cannabis-based um, products. So lubes, Hello Again was included, some lubes. Um, and uh, Hello Again, as well as all of the cannabis products were found to have no negative effect on the microbiome. Some names that you would all be very familiar with were found to have a negative effect on the microbiome. That's actually not surprising to me. I'll speak only about the cannabis brands. The testing in the cannabis industry is so rigorous. Yes. And, you know, that every batch is tested. Every batch is tested for the levels, different levels of THC and CBD and the cannabinoids, but it's also tested for purity. And as long as your formulation is correct, I, I just don't see how a cannabis product in a um, licensed dispensary is going to be anything but as you know absolutely pure it's very rigorous testing hopefully someday that will elevate the standards yeah non-cannabis mm -hmm. testing and what you're you know, as patty says your organic apple and tea bag go through <laughs> yeah i always make that point too i'm like if you ever want if people are want to be sticklers and eat 100 percent organic foods they should eat all their food from a cannabis dispensary right <laughs> place where you're getting 100 percent pesticide free organic food because we're the people we're the business that has the highest scrutiny of testing so <laughs> right it's too bad that message doesn't get out more people people don't understand that but that <laughs> is really an important message yeah. Yeah. We have, internally we have strict testing procedures where you know if we bring in new cocoa butter then we send that out for testing before it even goes into it. otherwise um it becomes really complicated so yeah, we have to test every ingredient yeah. before you mix the cannabis with it, because otherwise you could potentially, yeah, that that final product wouldn't pass and you could lose the money that you've paid for right. that. cannabis. not know what it was mixed into yeah. that. Yeah. So, right. yeah, everything is very um, tested throughout the process to make sure that everything is clean and, and you know, going to be past the rigorous testing. So, yes, that's one of those nice guarantees. Um, we have another person that's watching and they happen to have multiple sclerosis. And so they're wondering if they use one of your cannabis suppositories, if there's anything that would make them extra numb. So um, I'm wondering if you could like answer that question and then maybe give them a little bit more information about like when you insert it, you know, um, you know, how it actually works and how, you know, it doesn't, you know, actually cause like any kind of like st st uh, stimulation like in that area. If you could like give a little bit more information about that. So I think the best way for me to answer that, because I really can't answer about multi, the, the experience exactly. of multiple sclerosis. Although if you'd like to, if you would like to reach out to us through our website, we'll see it and I can forward on to you perhaps some literature that might help. But, um, but the experience of using hello again, you know, it, it's, it's not a, I think what you're asking is, does it numb the, the, the area, like the vaginal tract, does that feel numb? And the answer is no, it yeah. doesn't. In fact, the THC, as we said, is a vasodilator. So more blood is coming to that area. So it's almost kind of the opposite a little bit when that you use the suppository first, you can kind of feel that it's in there and you can feel that it's stimulating the area a little bit in, in, in the skin of the area a little bit. It's not uncomfortable or unpleasant. Um, or sexual, anything like that. It's just you can feel it kind of melting and interacting with your skin, uh, but you don't feel numbness in the area. No. Yeah. What ends up happening, I, I believe, is that, you know, if, if we're talking about pain relief, um, you know, the vaginal mucosa, first of all, when you use a t topical on your skin, if you have our pain in your hand and you use the topical on your skin, the, the THC is really, and the CBD is really calming the tissue right on top of your skin. And in response, the next layer down is getting, there's a chain re reaction of the nerves settling and calming down that can go quite deep into, into your body. It 
you have PMS and cramps, you can rub a topical on your belly and feel the relaxation down, you know, down where you want to feel it. So that's kind of the same idea with the, with the vaginal suppository, but as an added bonus, the skin in the vagina, the vaginal mucosa is much more um, soluble and pliant than the skin on your elbow. So much more like the skin inside your cheek. So um, that kind of chain reaction can happen much faster. Nice, nice. Well, I know I have not yet started to go through perimenopause, although who knows, because, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell, but I have had many women in my life who have been going through menopause. And I know that it can be very tough and that, you know, going through all these symptoms, you know, if there's anything that can help, you know, something like hello again is a lifesaver, <laughs> you know, and if it can bring, you know, um, relief to, you know, the anxiety and the irritability and the pain and the, you know, the, the foggy brain and, you know, um, just not feeling like yourself and being able to sleep and, you know, all the things that go along with that, you know, this is definitely something that everybody should at least try to see if it works for them. You know, cannabis is not for everybody, just like, you know, some of the, the medicines that you've talked about don't work for everybody. Hormone therapy doesn't work for everybody, but it's definitely something that people should try and see if it works for them. You know, um, cannabis suppositories are not something that people are used to, but I think it's something that everybody should at least try. You know, I think, um, you know, I used to not be a big tincture person. I've been using cannabis for 20 years and never really was into it all the, you know, the last couple of year I have been, and I wish I would have been using it all these years. So mm -hmm. I feel like the same thing is for suppositories, you know, like a lot of us haven't been using them. And I think that we've been missing out, you know, so I hope that a lot of people, you know, are watching this webinar or listening and that they'll open their eyes to something that could definitely be benefiting them, especially when we're all going to eventually, you know, come to this period of our life and be dealing with the different symptoms that we will biologically experience dealing, you know, whether whoever our moms were, you know, what we'll experience. So, um, yeah, this has been very, very helpful. Um, do you guys have anything else that you guys want to maybe share with us or any other resources maybe that you guys have, um, websites or, um, anything that you guys would be helpful for people that are going through menopause? Well, I, th I think our website is a great source yeah. for people to start with. We have a lot of information on there. I would also just add that, you know, this time in our life is actually a, quite a productive time. Sometimes you have a little extra more income, you have a little extra more time, you, you know, you could be dating again for the first time. So there's no reason not to feel your best. So whatever it is, of course, we'd love you to try hello again, but whatever it is, you know, just help yourself, get some help, talk to your friends and try different things, but just feel better. Yep. Yeah. Get a I little menopause that. support group, go to some exactly. dispensaries and try some hello again. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we do have resources on our on our website, as Patty, Patty mentioned, and you can also sign up for our newsletter where we, you know, we have some um, menopause related information that goes out in the newsletter as well. That's wonderful. Yeah, I love your guys' newsletters. They're great. Um, well, I love working with you guys. You're one of my favorite guests. We're four sessions now, and I encourage everybody that's watching to go on our YouTube channel and to check out the motherhood and cannabis webinar. That was another one that we did together. That was wonderful. The one on endometriosis is very helpful and the women and cannabis women's health issues is another wonderful one that we did together. So um, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you to both you wonderful guest speakers. Happy to have you guys on again and to your wonderful team to Halman and um, the other wonderful hello again, team members that helped to make this possible. Um, thank you guys. And thank you to the audience members. I hope that we were able to share some information that will help everybody, everybody become better informed cannabis consumers and that the information that we shared will help you find relief. Everybody have a wonderful day and um, stay happy, healthy and well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.